Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have a presentation of the New Ideas Center study of the image of Belarus international media. Please, who hasn't changed their name in the Zoom, state your first name and publication. If you'd like to ask a question after your guest presentation, please raise your hand or post your question in the chat room. The duration of today's press conference slash presentation is one hour. Our speakers today include Lesia Rudnik, Center for New Ideas Research and doctoral student at Karlstadt University, Sweden. Next, Maria Sadovskaya Komlich, a non resident fellow of CPA, Center of European Political Analysis. Also, a reminder we have an English interpretation available in live mode. So if you prefer to listen to us in English, please select that option in the Zoom. If you choose the Russian language option, you will listen to us in Belarusian and Russian. But if you choose the English language option, you will hear the whole conference in English. Now, I give floor to Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I will start with the, the presentation. I will tell you what our research was about, how it was conducted. But if you have a deeper methodological questions, please ask them in private because we shouldn't take too much time during the presentation with the questions. Just a second, please. I need to open the presentation. Can you see the presentation? So you can see the screen now, yes, more or less. So I think I should leave it like that. I'm sorry we didn't test it in advance. So we'll start. Today we have met to discuss the research of the Center for New Ideas. I am the author of the research. It is about the changes of the media image of Belarus outside of Belarus in 2020-2021. We decided to make this research in August because we understood there are some changes in how the foreign media are actually covering Belarus. We wanted to highlight the trends. We want to understand what exactly they write about Belarus. Thus, the task of this analysis of the foreign media outlets was to uh, understand the trends of coverage, to understand what and how they write about the sanctions, repressions, opposition leaders, the protest actions, and so on and so forth. Also, we held a number of focus group meetings to understand the strategies of people who work with foreign media journalists to understand how they communicate with them and propose some optimization strategies. When that wanted to understand how the foreign media reacted to the electoral campaign, to the hijacking of the airplane, we also discussed with the focus group participants about the mistakes made by the journalist the foreign journalist and what the topics were what, what were the topics most popular one yeah i will uh, leave the link to our research 
after after the presentation in the chat it's already available we believe that our research uh, will be useful to the representatives of the foreign uh, journalist uh, to uh, representatives of the the initiatives that do not work with polit politicians directly but require foreign uh, attention attention of foreign journalists oh in terms of methodology uh it was the period of from july 14 2020 until july 14 2021 starting from the registration of the candidates we selected seven uh, countries and 10 media outlets of course the sample could have been different we could include the more or less or more and fewer media outlets we could select it other countries but in this very research we showed the result of the expert discussions In the next research, we are planning not only to understand the position of people who communicate with the foreign journalists, but also that of the foreign journalists as well. We want to get a bigger sample, include more media outlets. A few words about, we can learn more about the methodology later, but we work uh, with the representatives of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya office, People's Anti-Crisis Management, Honest People Project, Viktor Babarika's staff, Politzak.me, as well as seven representatives of Desperus. On the screen, you can see the media outlets we analyzed and uh, the number of articles that we have analyzed overall. We reviewed 3,269 articles. The majority of them were from the German media outlets second came uh, ones from the russian media outlets and the minority were from the russian media outlets in terms of the results of the research we can start with the most popular topics covered in the foreign media over the last year here we can see that in terms of the intensity of uh, the number of articles has gone down. We, we see a dive in uh, October. So the attention to Belarus has been going down because the, while the protests became less visible, the foreign journalists became less interested in the Belarus, but in May after the hijacking of the plane, the attention to journalists to Belarus came more active. The first topic, the first elections or falsification, then the her personality, her political surrounding and the political media outlets for media we often wrote about the repression against the journalist the Belarusian journalist also about the liquidation of media outlets and the closure of the media outlets those were the most popular topics you can also see in the screen the, the people like Latushka Babarika where they were rarely mentioned compared to Svetlana Tikhanovska. We can also see that not very often the foreign journalists wrote about Maria Kalesnikov, although we we thought that the Maria Kalesnikov uh, was widely covered abroad, but according to our research, a man from Svetlana Tikhanovska, the foreign media outlet did not really cover any other political leaders in Belarus, independent political leaders. Except elections, what were they writing about mostly? It was mostly about elections, 
uh, rigging of the election and the repression. More often they wrote about the protest, even in May, if you look at the protest H case. In May, they very often wrote about the election, about the protest. You can read about that in detail in the research text. There's a coverage for each country in the Russian media outlets, particularly that we chose for analysis. The repression was rarely mentioned compared to the media outlets from uh, the West. And it could seem that uh, it was a choice of the editorial office not to write much about the repression. A lot the repressions were widely covered in the German and Swedish media outlets. In terms of repression and protests, we will see that the political prisoners were rarely mentioned. Therefore, journalists mostly focused on the overall description of the situation. They wrote that Belarus, uh, there, there, are, there is repression in Belarus, but compared to Belarus, media outlets did not really mention concrete names of the political prisoners. The thing that stands out is that uh, in May, the topic of the repression became more prominent, more relevant. It is can, connected with the Prodasevich case, just like any other attention of the foreign media connected with Belarus. Interestingly, in uh, August, they wrote actively about the position of the official Minsk. In other words, how the official Minsk uh, treats the repression and the protest. Also, the position of Moscow and Russia were mentioned. Later, this was not really mentioned much. We can see uh, here's a, there were more and more protests and repression, but the foreign journalists were not covering that, that those topics much. This looks natural, and the journalists don't, did not write about Belarus that much anymore because Belarus was no longer that high on the agenda, international agenda. We look at how international media described the coverage of Tanskanovsky of the last year. We will see that the majority of foreign outlets that we analyzed uh, consider her a uh, a political leader or a registered candidate. Also, a major part described uh, her as the political fugitive. Despite our thoughts, uh, and despite our findings that Svetlana Tikhanovskaya was often mentioned as, as the wife of Sergei Tikhanovsky, wasn't really the case. The majority number of articles saying so was quite low. The same is true about uh, her being covered as elected president. Very few articles call her the president-elect. Although we know that in some countries this was a political stance, political position. It's interesting to note that the foreign visit to Svetlana Tikhanovska that we believe could have become the major topics to be covered, particularly in the countries where the media covered them, they were not actively mentioned during her meetings with the Johnson, with the Biden. Media rarely mentioned those. Next topic, third in terms of popularity, is the Belarusian media. Here we analyzed how overall the Belarusian media described or focused on the repression. That was actually the case. 
they did write about that, about the repression, about the closure of the media outlets, about the detention of journalists. Particularly, we see that it became prominent in May and uh, in August, of course, the number of such articles skyrocketed. Interestingly, the foreign media very often, particularly at the beginning of the protest wave and in May, uh, they included links to the st state builders and media outlets very often the number of such links exceeded that of the uh, links to the independent media it must have been to do with the fact that the four media were trying to reflect the position of the official minsk or somehow to make the readers understand what the state media wrote. Also, we can see that uh, in May and August, the foreign media criticized the state media, the state media, although this was not the most popular topic in terms of description of the state doors media abroad we also analyzed the coverage of the sanctions very often the position of the west was mostly covered in terms of sanctions coverage and they also mentioned the how the sanctions could influence the regime. There was an opinion of the opposition mentioned, while the position of the official Minsk was not often covered compared to that of the opposition. Although we can see that in May, the opinion though, or the position of the official Minsk was more popular than that of the opposition. Overall, a lot of media outlets covered sanctions, particularly in August, September, and then in May. It would be interesting to see how it is, um, this topic is covered today. Along with the migration crisis, this must be the most popular topic today. But our research and in July 2021. I believe the fact that we noticed during the media analysis, it is that uh, before media actually using the word on the name Belarus and not white Russia, while in, well, in 2020, the name White Russia and Belarus were actively used. In 2021, there were no such cases when a single article would use both names and the number of articles were, that wrote White Russia went down. This is a positive change. Uh, it, reflects the work of the diasporas and the political correctness playing its role affecting the situation it is directly connected with the fact that medusa that went lies for the case of russia they uh, the, the policy that started from 8th of august 2020 journalists could select their option of writing either Belarus or Belarus. Also, German media started to use more actively the name Belarus instead of Weiss, the Russian, the white Russia. We can find this information in our research paper as well. We have tables, the relevant tables. Now, in a few words about the focus groups which we covered, uh, the representative spoke with the 
um, for media. We asked them about the strategies they use. First, it's the verification and media promotion. They have a direct connection with the journalist. They could have a direct contact with. They're not working with the press releases, but they directly contact journalists, asking them to, to promote separate individual news. Des Despers also noted the, that they created the special databases of media partners. So they knew who to turn to in different cases. For the politicians, one of the ways of communicating with the foreign journalist was a Twitter account. We also note noticed that the participants of the focus groups are the sources of verification and clarifications. For example, they explain if 300,000 protesters is a lot or not. It's usually done uh, and prompted by the journalists who see them and the sources of verification. Diaspora members, we often noted that they were addressed by the journalist where they live, uh, asking them to explain and verify certain information. For political forces, it became more relevant to promote their agenda. For example, the image of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya comes to mind. Again, explanation that the Belarus is the a separate country and not part of uh, the Russian influence. This information was promoted actively in the United States media outlet. This was noted by the representatives of the political forces. And also, the diaspora managed to promote the message that Lukashenko should be called the the president-elect and uh, some media outlets abroad started to call Lukashenko. Former president of Belarus. We asked the participants of this group about the, uh, the foreign journalist interest. We tried to compare it with the, our research. Here, the political forces say that they wanted to promote uh, the events like the visit of uh, René Fazel, the murder of Roman Bandarenka, the tranche IMF. Everyone noted that the journalists were mostly interested in the in negative events. Uh, among the events that were of most interest for the journalists, people who work with the media outlets with the hijacking of the plane migration crisis. I would like to remind you that this research was conducted in September. And then the migration crisis was not as not noticeable as it is now. Still, the opinion of the participants was uh, important. Uh, also, the women's role in protest that we did not analyze in our research was also noted by the focus group participants. The meeting of uh, Stanislavski with Joe Biden and Boris Johnson. And I was interested in the analysis of the mistakes that foreign journalists made. We asked uh, focus groups about that. We noticed that they don't only make mistakes in the names of the Belarusian politicians and calling some people the members of the Coordination Council, the wrongful people. We wanted to ask them about the mistakes. You can find the more details on 
on that in our research paper, but a few words, a few examples given to you now. The fact that the Belarus is made part of Russia or Russian context, Kalisnikov was called the presidential candidate. They asked uh, to make the interview with Babarika, although he has been in jail for some time. Lukashenko was called uh, uh, the election winner without saying that there was a rigged election. Tsikhanovsky was called the human rights activist, and they said that the 10,000 people, not 100,000 Belarusians took to the streets. In conclusion, we we'll see that the Belarus is going down uh, in the in the agenda, in this natural. We also heard from the focus group members that every country is trying to uh, fit the events in Belarus in their own content, context or show it through their own prism with migration crisis is more relevant. The Belarusian might get higher on the agenda, but overall, in terms of coverage of what is happening in Belarus, see that the foreign media outlets are, are now writing about Belarus much more seldom than they used to. Uh, people kept in prison uh, no longer on the agenda. As long as, as soon as Maria Kristikova was jailed, the, she was mentioned 10 times less per month. It was This seemed to us strange because that was a strange event uh, that Maria Kristikova ended up in jail for taking part in the political campaign. But we see that. Uh, that was actually the case, she disappeared from the agenda. The same is true about Viktor Babarika. While in July he was actually mentioned, later on the number of articles about him shrinked until uh, his uh, sentence was announced. Comparing the uh, what interest of focus groups and of media outlets, we see that the lack of coordination between the an understanding of uh, foreign journalists' work. People working with a foreign journalist do not properly explain the interests of the foreign media outlets. Also, we have different samples. We analyzed uh, different media outlets. We can see uh, that they write differently about Belarus. So we noticed a lack of coordination between communicators, representatives of the uh, civil initiatives, civil communities want to cooperate closer and more actively discuss the cooperation with the foreign media. And also, what Belarus dominates over the white Russia name, hopefully it will be still relevant in the future. What are our recommendations? First is to search for and establish links with ambassadors of Belarus abroad. It means that people assess the effective communication with foreign media outlets through the personal contacts. Only then they, we see that Belarus is going up on the agenda. So I think that unique information should be offered and personal contacts with journalists established journalists use them as verifications because there's lack of legitimacy. New approaches should be found to offer new information.
The next recommendation is to coordinate media messages. I already mentioned that there's a lack of the, this could improve the communication in general with foreign media outlets through the centralized messages. Verify and correct journalist mistakes is another recommendation because they're still there and possibly verify and correct journalist uh, mistakes, as I said, and conduct media monitoring of foreign media with using diasporas. We noticed this in our analysis, it doesn't cover all the media outlets in all the countries that we need to understand what the foreign journalists are interested in or we should offer to them other discourses or narratives or work with their own narratives and uh, help them to cover them from the right angle. Also, raising the media coverage of political prisoners is uh, paramount. The political prisoners are almost absent in uh, the coverage of foreign journalists, unless those are uh, well-known people. You can read the rest uh, on the link that I sent to the chat. Thank you. Marie, do you have anything to add to what Lisa said? I was not really taking part of the research, so I have a lot to add, but I understand that we don't have much time left. So I'll tell you what I believe why this uh, research is important that we have a q a i'm a journalist from journal belarus live in abroad for 15 years i uh, work in the dutch organization work in media media i started at the columbia university in new york in the journalist school when we talk about the legitimacy and legitimacy of uh, diaspora we noticed that the the person who works with the foreign media needs to have some status, uh, some experience and validation, proving that this person will provide the balanced information and not just promote political agenda because they, he or she likes this or that candidate very much. Uh, in the last uh, year, I wrote articles about Belarus for foreign affairs for the SIPA, Central European Policy Analysis, and other media outlets. Also, I had the experience of working with the International PR Agency when I didn't have to write any articles together with our PR agent. We worked on the press release, in that case, about the Leonor Zlobinale Alexandra. So my quote was not critically assessed, was copied, by the major media outlets in uh, Sweden, Portugal, Germany, Denmark, United Kingdom, in some cases, France and others. Why was happening then? It was not because I was legitimate as a desk representative, but because of the legitimacy of the PR specialist in London, where the person spreading this press release with quotes of certain people, plus the access to the sources, had a huge network of personal contacts with the little leading political, uh, act, uh, political experts. So legitimacy, this kind of legitimacy is impossible to achieve if you are a representative political community or political headquarters. Why journalists and media outlets that cover Belarus abroad do not use the response representatives of the focus group as verified sources? Because when a person is a representative of the political headquarters, it's clear that their main task is to promote the message the message supported by the political leaders so that it would actively used uh, by the foreign 
uh, breeders like the message do not call Lukashenko the president-elect um, I have checked that BBC and American yeah still call him Lukashenko the president so while AFP and others and other media outlets do not use the rule that of not calling Alexei Lukashenko the president-elect media outlets will not support this message of the representatives of the uh, political headquarters because they have their own editorial standards and norms the same is true about the journalists who work with you uh, they uh, they say during their negotiations and uh, discussions with the focus groups that they're interested in the women's issue and others but there are lots of editors through whom information to Belarus about those goes uh, before it reaches the end reader. I believe that the Belarusian civil society, journalist society, even though I improved the work with the foreign media, but it missed a couple of uh, possibilities first, uh, is to be a subject and an object of what is happening in Belarus be the subject meaning to actively send the pitches ideas of the articles to the uh, various editorial offices through the context of the journalists who know you promote their name and their reputation as the person who can provide information about others i know the people who work a lot as fixers for, for media outlets and they're trying to do their best as a journalist but as a result the decision to call Lukashenko president or not is taken by the CNN journalists and not their fixers secondly uh, another thing that the Belarusian committees missed is that the regular work with the PR agencies we can say that these PR agencies are very expensive, but these PR agencies do not have to sign an agreement with the particular politicians or diasporas. In the four cases where my quotes were actively used by the foreign media through the PR agencies, I was contacted by the international organizations who, which already has the contract with the PR agency, and they said, uh, dear Maria, we want to quote you. Will you agree to be accessible to journalists for interviews? And the next, for the next two days, I was on the phone because every possible journalist wanted to ask me for a quote. I didn't pay a ruble for that, uh, neither did uh, democratic forces, because luckily, Belarusians have a lot of international organizations who are ready to support our media outlets and our civil society, not because they need something from us, because they uh, believe that what is happening in Belarus is awful. We should work with them as intermediaries because it's much easier for them to get interested. It's much easier to explain to them, or sometimes it's not necessary to ex explain anything. It's much easier for them to find access to foreign media. What we can see based on this research is that uh, uh, we're trying to become pioneers again on this path it's not so bad i'm not saying it's bad but we trying to establish contact contacts we're telling them the true picture of the world and then we uh, uh, wonder why at some point the editorial decisions are made where the interest to Belarus is uh, high on the agenda where there's some interest to, for Lukashenko when the plane is hijacked on the migration crisis. The Belarusian community doesn't really understand why the visit to Svetlana Tikhanovska and the meeting with John Biden could not be relevant for Americans, including because the fact because Joe Biden meets with the position of Taiwan or Dalai Lama and the fact of meeting 
with channels that doesn't mean anything for American audience. To understand what actually means for American audience, you need to be a journalist who would work with editors of certain media outlets and convince people that this visit is important for the audience in Los Angeles and Portland, or uh, find the ambassadors and agencies that uh, would know how to work with these media outlets. If it doesn't happen, the Belarus will have the same uh, future as Birma. For example, we don't know that uh, recently the 5,000 people were left out of prison and then they were rearrested later on. Do we know what is happening in Taiwan? What is becoming near and closer closer to China, unfortunately. Do we know what is happening in Syria after more than 10 years of civil conflict? Of course, as a civil society, as community, as analyst, as expert, we cannot all the time uh, follow the communities where the people are trying to get the free access for, to election and democracy. And this uh, unnatural cycle of the foreign media and bills should, must not be, doesn't have to be an exception. Our main task here to have my voice more heard, to educate English-speaking, German-speaking, French-speaking journalists who can write and talk at the level similar to uh, the Belarusian language. Another option for us is to promote alternative models of spreading the content created by the Belarusian media outlets. For example, my organization is um, sending the content about Belarus to the Russian media outlets, Russian speaking media outlets, and the, on the Latvian media outlets started using our topics 10 times more op often than they did during the election campaign. Thirdly, I uh, totally agree with the conclusions of the research that the coordination of the communication strategies is de facto absent. Uh, the inter interviewees of Alessia said there is no coordination between the political structures. That's half of the problem. But six months ago, I asked the representatives of the Belarusian Association of Journalists about the number of times they were uh, communicated, uh, they were contacted by uh, the people representing Latushka to coordinate their actions before some international visit. The response was zero, total zero. There were some consultations in the Coordination Council and the big group of people, but there were no proactive consultations promoted by the political forces while they were discussing those things at the top political level. This was not ex existent. So we need to understand our responsibility and the fact that the media outlets, like that was shown in this slide, are portrayed in the foreign media this way or another. We're responsible for that as journalists and media outlets that we cannot get through the wall of politicized messages coming from the Belarusian oppositional forces. Well, I think it's stop here. It would be great to hear other thoughts on that. I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Maria. We have time for a Q&A. So colleagues, if you have questions or you want remarks the time is now we did receive certain questions in the chat here's the question what is the difference in a, of opinions coming from the western eastern media outlets did you try to assess it thank you for the question no we didn't intend to measure the or assess the difference 
and opinions coming from the East and West media outlets. So we don't make, did not make a sample in this respect, but we do plan to do it in the future and to understand what uh, media outlets in Russia, United States and Ukraine are different, how, how they are different. You did not measure and assess the tone of voice in the articles. The, we received a lot of questions about the, the European country being the most uh, accepting for Belarusians, towards Belarusians. Going back to the countries we selected, it's easy to answer the question. We noticed that it was Germany. There were a lot of articles. Uh, just covering the human rights compared to uh, other media outlets. They wrote more about the Polina Kalesnikova, political prisoners and repressions against journalists. Overall, the number of articles in German media was more than in Poland, we analyzed uh, three media outlets in Germany. So overall, we may say that uh, Belarus uh, was liked more by Germany in terms of human rights coverage and number of articles written. Did you measure or assess how the narrative of, of about Belarus changed after the 2020. Did you assess this narrative before 2020 to compare it with that of the after 2020? No, we didn't, it was our first attempt. Also, we didn't work with the, the narrative. It's a different approach, uh, the content analysis method meaning that we need to analyze all the articles mentioned in Belarus and then to see how they describe activities. To have a narrative analysis, we need to have a smaller sample that we did because 3,000 articles for narrative analysis is a lot of work to do for one year. Like I said at the beginning, maybe in the future, will analyze a smaller sample and make a narrative and discourse analysis there. We also had a question about the difference between uh, the Belarusian media and the foreign media covering a similar thing. Maybe you will be interested in this. When we were creating our sample board, tried to include the German media in American media from different sides, though, like Washington Post and the Hill in the United States, the one from the right and from the left. Although I might say that uh, there are more leftist sometimes outlets, there's a difference in terms how they cover the events inside the country. I don't think there'll be a difference between them covering Belarus. Since I live in Poland and consume media here, I see the polarized media and uh, some of them are pro promoting Belarusian uh, Polish government, but there is a consensus about the Belarusian issue. This is the only thing uh, when they have this, uh, this same tone of voice and approach. The difference here was when they covered Jana Shostak, that was criticized by the con conserv Polish conservatives, men and women, when she was emotionally speaking at a meeting 
it was clear that she was not wearing a bra and uh, a big campaign against her was made by the Polish conservative politicians. At the same time, the Polish pro-government media were given more words, more access to people criticizing her, while the leftist and near-leftist political forces were trying to protect her. Is it the Borcha and it's a special women's issue? High Heels made a calendar where the famous Polish women uh, were photographed and Borcha managed to support Jana Szostak. The phenomenon of Jana Szostak showed how the discourses are se get separated. I mean, the discourse is supported by different political forces. Uh, Colleagues, uh, are there any more questions? I wanted to say a few words. The number of articles that you have analyzed is impressive because of the last several years, I was the coordinator of the Belarus Focus International Prize. Our task was to stimulate the interest and attention towards Belarus because before 2020, Belarus was the country. This was not widely covered by the foreign media, but the number of articles about Belarus that appeared after 2020 is significant. Uh, after analyzing Guardians for several days, I noticed that Belarus was in the headlines with, with different focus the migrant crisis is everywhere in headlines now but it was added by the article about the person who was storming uh, the capital building it was uh, about him asking for political asylum in belarus i would like to add that an important aspect of alice's research was that uh, they bought access to premium the garden premium uh, subscriptions because the majority of the media outlets affecting the public opinion um, are working with paywall so the garden is interesting but uh, in britain is considered to be the supporters of particular political force but it's not considered particular representatives. Thank you for this uh, important clarification. In indeed, the majority of media outlets that were analyzed were analyzed uh, through the prism of the premium subscription because we wanted to cover the, all the articles about Belarus. In terms of coverage, the recent coverage of Belarus, it's the media effect when something bad is happening, Belarus uh, is focused upon. Unfortunately, the positive events do not make Belarus particularly prominent agenda. Although if we believe the progress of the election as a positive phenomenon, or like the number of people on the street, we could say that the protest drew the attention while other events were negatively covered Unfortunately, we see the, ten, the trend here that the attention to Belarus is going down or was going down later. But be interesting to see uh, the, what the results of this similar research will be next year. While the, now the Belarusian agenda has been normalized, Belarusians have used to the repression. There are no more critical uh, events that would surprise people. So not only Belarusians get used to that, but the foreign media as well. Next year we'll be able to again analyze the coverage and find out the new trends. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, everyone. I would like to thank our guest. In five minutes, we'll have a dialogue on culture. 
if you watched us on YouTube, uh, stay with us. Thank you. All the best.